Welcome to The Mighty Dragon. I was joined recently on the podcast by actor Jeppe Beck Larsen. We know him as Heston in The Last Kingdom, but I wanted to look back at his career to see how it all started. We talk about what he liked and disliked about Heston, funny behind-the-scenes moments, the enduring fascination of Viking drama, and what his plans are for the future. Big thanks to Jeppe for this interview opportunity. May I wish you and your dog all the very best, and hopefully see you in a Star Wars series soon. Well, hello, hello. Mr. Larson. Hello. <laughs> How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. It's Friday and it's sunny out. Yeah. I've done all my taxes, so I'm in a good mood. I don't have to think about that for a year now. <laughs> That's great. I so caught you at the right time great. then. great. <laughs> feel <a> relief. <laughs> That's wonderful. I've just seen The Last Kingdom, uh, the film, absolutely wonderful. And I wanted yeah, to ask you a bit Oh, God, I really loved it. Oh, I couldn't blink or breathe. And we're actually going to go up to the castle. Um, We're going to go up there um, to see it. Oh, yeah. I am super excited about that. Yes. Fantastic. I haven't been there myself, but I really want to go one day. Yeah. yeah. Just to, like, kind of close the chapter. Yes, yes. I wanted to ask you a bit about your character, Heston, and obviously we know you as Heston in The Last Kingdom, but how did your acting journey start? Oh, it started a long time ago. Actually, uh, now this makes me feel very old when I say this. Uh, I've only said it a couple of times this year, but this is my 40th year of being an actor. I started when I was 11, so I'm turning 51 now in a month, which is... Oh insane i can't believe it myself but there we're it is. the same age 19 crazy yay <laughs> we're very youthful for our uh for our oh, age, yeah, aren't we? for so sure like, yeah, absolutely absolutely <laughs> we have good genes please continue sorry <laughs> no 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 so yeah i was in a i was i was actually it started it's a bit of a long story but i'll, I'll try to make it short i was in a boys choir uh a, a very known boys choir in oslo um and uh someone came to audition some boys for uh a show about uh jesus and judas and his disciples but when they were kids mm-hmm. i have no idea what it was a you know i sound like a very strange idea (laughs) and i haven't seen it because it probably aired 40 years ago uh so they just handpicked a couple of us in the in the in the choir to audition for it uh however i didn't get the part or anything i i i had never been in front of i'd never been acting or anything like that before so I, i probably did a horrible audition. <laughs> I don't know, really. You have to ask my mom about that. Oh. But uh, <laughs> a couple of months, so this was before Easter, and a couple of months later, there was a director who was going to make a film about a boy uh, who had lost his father at sea, and his mother has mar- had married another man, right. and all the problems that can uh, you know, arise from that situation. And she saw the auditions, which we had done, and she just went, that's him. So I, my very first part, my very first role was a lead in a TV movie. And it's just been going on from there. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. 40 years ago. 40 yeah. years. A, chi- a 40 child. 40 years. <laughs> Merely a child actor. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I actually, I, I worked as a child actor uh, until, or maybe, uh, well, I worked until I was 18. I worked a lot, actually. And then I just took a break for five years because I didn't know if this was, you know, if this was what, what I was going to do for the rest of my life yeah. or... Uh, so I, you know, worked in the kindergartens. I worked at store storehouses. I worked in flower shops. I just, you know, the whole yeah. drill. And then actually in 1995, when I was 23, my mother signed me up for an audition uh, because they were going to add a, a theme park just outside Oslo. We're starting up called Viking Land. 
Right. And she just signed me up for the audition without me knowing. And I just <laughs> went. And right. uh, I got the job and uh, it's been ever since then. Wow. So, yeah. so your mum was very integral to your success. Uh, Does she, she remind wanted, you of that? She wanted a glorious, uh, she wanted her son to have a glorious career. Or maybe she didn't know what she was doing because I've been poor a lot. But uh, but still, <laughs> yeah, she, oh. did, she did that. Uh, but I think yeah. she's she kind of saw maybe me as a young man getting more lost, not knowing where, where I was supposed to be in society. Yeah. Uh, maybe. And uh and she knew how happy I was when I was acting, when I was, you know, teenager and stuff like that. So she just gave it a go. And um, I have to thank her. I, I've thanked her on several occasions, but uh, thank you very much, Mom. I love you. Uh, and you, I owe you everything. So, yeah. Did you have a preference for screen or stage as, as a younger actor? No, not at all. I just loved acting. I loved pretending. I really loved pretending. I think the whole... Uh, I remember when Star Wars came when I was seven and E.T. came. Yeah. I don't know how old I was, maybe a couple of years later. And then when I was a child actor and a teenager, I understood that I could have all these toys and, and pretend and, you know, I just wanted to, you know, play through life and uh, yeah. have, have fun. And uh, now I'm, I'm, you know, and making money of, of um, what you love the most is uh, the most rewarding thing you can, you can in life, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been very, very lucky and I'm, I'm very grateful for that going to bring us back to Heston now what did yes. you most what did you most like about his character and what didn't you like about his character oh there's plenty of things I didn't <laughs> like I mean how can you like that person <laughs> <laughs> Just... uh, I mean I, I I really like his honesty he was never afraid to be honest and I liked how free he was. I think I've said this before in other interviews, but I really enjoyed the fact that he wasn't bound by anything. He wasn't bound by religion, by loyalty, by, you know, anything at all. He was just, he, to me, maybe some of the, some of the other actors are, are <laughs> uh, may dispute this but but i think he was the most free character in in uh, last kingdom because everyone else is bound by something what i didn't like well he's a narcissistic murdering rapist <laughs> for one they're not very endearing qualities are that's, they <laughs> uh, that's that's i think that's number 1 <laughs> 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 And uh, he was he was a he was a man only a mother could love, but I don't think his mother loved him much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I think that sums it up actually. Yeah. With with Heston, I couldn't tr work out who his allegiances were with. Really, um, were they just to serve himself? His Absolutely. Own? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did really enjoy that character, I must admit. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I loved it. I loved playing it. Um, it's something... Uh, in Norway, I've, like, 95% of my roles have been a good guy. Ah. Like a comic sidekick or, or uh, a gentle-hearted person. Or, so it was amazing for, to me that they actually saw that I had it in me to play a very bad man. It was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. I I, I always yeah. think that some of the best comedians make the best bad guys. There's that yeah, real probably. flip side there, isn't there? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and for me, it was, it was, it was, 
great to be able to play a man that's so far from myself. Because right. I think I'm the opposite of a narcissistic murdering rapist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I am. And I think other people will testify. People who know me will testify to that. So, um, oh God, should I be phoning the police it was, here? <laughs> it, was, it was great to, uh, to, to just explore that side of, of, the, of, the, of life and the humanity, yeah. I think. Yes. Yeah. What research did you do? before portraying uh, this character? Oh, um, thing is, uh, first of all, I read the two first books in the series, yeah. with Bernard Cornwall, but then I stopped reading them because I didn't want to fall in love with something that we did, that he wrote in the books that we weren't going to do in the show and vice right. versa. Right. Okay. Uh, because I knew we were taking a couple of different directions. Uh, but I intend to read them. I have them all in my bookshelf, so, so I intend to read them. Um, but to me, to be honest, because Heston uh, is a real-life person. He lived back in the day, uh, and he was an extremely successful warlord and pirate so there's been there's a lot of uh, of writing about him. He, I mean, I, I he has his own Wikipedia page, which that was the first thing I found, and I read uh, I read that, and I found a couple of podcasts that were talking about him, and a couple of articles, and also passages from history books and stuff like that. So I kind of based my Heston on the real life Heston. Not oh, that oh. much of the book, Heston. So I don't see Heston as a coward, as many of you guys watching maybe do. I see him as a tactical genius. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's stupid to get in the front line because he will just get stabbed by some random person and die, and then you can't enjoy life anymore. It's much more... You're much safer, have much bigger probability of living a cr prosperous life if you're up on a hill directing your men down there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Away from trouble. Oh, yeah. So I, I kind of based my, my, my Heston on the real life Heston. I don't know. This might be a spoiler, though, for everyone. Mm, but uh, have you seen Vikings, the show? Yes. 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 So I think it is. Season four, I think. Now, here comes the spoiler. So if you haven't watched Vikings, you should maybe switch. switch. Out. We'll do like <laughs> this when you can watch, uh, <laughs> when you can turn on. But in season four, Ragnar Lothbrok fakes his own death outside of Paris, right? Or right. was it season three? I think it was season four. I don't, I don't remember. He fakes that he's becoming ill both to his own men, his own people, and to the to the Parisians, as far as I can remember. And then if and then he wants to be baptized so he can be buried in Christian ground, you know, yeah. in Christian soil. And then he fakes his own death, and they carry him into Paris. It is Paris, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, it, yeah. There was an attack and on so Paris. So that he will be buried in Christian soil. And then when they're inside, he just pops out of the coffin and just murders the bishop yeah. and does everyone. That was Heston who did <gasps> that in real life. No! Yes. And it worked so well the first time, he did it again. So he did that <laughs> twice. I think the first time he did it in Italy, yes. And the... The second time, I don't remember which city, what, what country it was. But I think the first time he did it because he thought it was Paris or, or, or a, a city in France, but they were actually in Italy. So, um, yeah. So wow. they stole that from me. Yeah. <laughs> that, was <laughs> that, that, was, that was how cunning and, and big of a warlord he was in real life. So I, I wanted to try to portray that. I think it's been a real big learning lesson for me watching The Last Kingdom and watching Vikings and all of that just to learn about British history. 
Yeah, I'm like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> so now you can turn on the sound again. We're back. We're <laughs> back. So yes, it, and also working out which characters were the real characters and who have, has been brought in and a load of them actually existed which is absolutely incredibly fascinating absolutely very fascinating i think uh, i think um, i don't want to take uh, take anything away from any other viking show or medieval show but i think last kingdom is one of the most historically correct shows yes. out there yeah we're not 100 but but uh, you know yeah. one of the most so that and was extremely interesting to be a part of yeah I was kind of torn whether I wanted the the Vikings to take over the whole of the UK or if the Anglo-Saxon should have won <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I'm, I'm yeah. still considering this actually yeah but as you we said, could have I been mean, part of was, Scandinavia <laughs> <laughs> yeah but and as you said it was very interesting for me as well because I learned a lot about old English history myself when I was working there because we don't they don't teach that in school here, as far uh -huh. as I remember. We have our own king sagas uh, in Norway, yeah. you know. Um, ah, interesting. Um, is there any funny moments or behind the scenes moments that you can share with us from the sect? I mean, there's loads. There's loads. We had so much fun on that set. We became like a, a big family. But there's always one that stands out. And maybe some of your viewers or listeners will have heard this before. But that's that's the one moment that stands out for me always. And um, it was in season three. There's the Battle of, uh, of uh, Bamfleot in the episode five and six. Yeah. When I have skated by my side and Utra is encircled by my men down on the field and everything, and you know, uh, Alfred and they're waiting in the woods. <laughs> I was sitting on the hill, and uh, uh, Thea, who played skate, was on my my left side, and on her left side was a horse hunter, a stunt guy, and on my right side there was Dagfin, Simon Stensby. And he, I tell him to run off into the fray, and he does. And at one point, she runs off. She rides off down towards Utrid because she sees Utrid. She wants to go to Utrid. And the stunt guy, the horse handler, he rides after her, and I ride after them. And I hit her on the back of the head with my axe. I don't know if you remember. And then I lift her onto my horse, and I go like, Pleh! to Utrid, and I ride off, you know, before he gets to her. So when we're shooting the close-up of that, I hit her on the side of the head, on the back of the head with my axe. I lift her over to my horse, and then the horse hander, the stunt guy, takes her horse out of frame. Right. Just, just to the right there. And then I go to Utrecht, and I turn my horse, but he had only gone just out of frame. So when we exit frame, we're just behind the other horse. And my horse, Joker, which I loved, oh. he went, <sighs> and then we mounted the horse in front of us. So that's my life now. I'm sitting on a horse who has sex with another horse or tries to have sex with another horse. And I'm holding an ax and reins in my left hand and an actress in my right hand. And there's 300 people who just goes, no, oh, no. And oh my this, God. Is, this is what we're doing right now. So, and it all went very fast. It only ha it only lasted for like five seconds or something. Uh, oh, that sounds, that sounds familiar. <laughs> but it was a lifetime. Oh, it does sound familiar though. Mm. See, I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> um, but it was a crazy moment. And then the whole, the, Joker jumped back down and the, the stunt guys and some other people came in and he got spooked and so he jolted to the left and we were hanging like uh, you know the cartoons we you know when they run off a cliff and they don't understand that they have run off a cliff before they look down that's what it felt like we were in midair and then we hit the mud oh tail so it, oh, went too, it went too fast for me to get scared. And Taya didn't, she didn't see anything because she was lying across my horse. So she didn't understand what was happening. Yeah. But, um, 
that was a very special moment in my life. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. And I will That's cherish hilarious. it. It's Just crazy. Saying that the story thing is that I, 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 I am pretty sure that Joker understood what he was doing, uh, that what he yeah. had done, because, you know, half an hour later, I had to get on him again and do another close up when I was, you know, shouting at at the guys fighting, and he was he was standing there. He was he was very, <laughs> and and I went up to him and I said, hey. So, Joker, um, the thing that happened back there, you know, uh, it's okay. I, I've been, I've been a teenager. I know what it's like oh. to, you know. <laughs> but could we just, could you just give me a warning next time, or could we just? And he went. He was very. Oh. He, was, he was embarrassed. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Joker. Oh. He was. I was. A, I was an amazing, amazing horse, and I, I loved him very yeah. much. Oh. So that's a crazy, crazy thing that happened. And that was just one of the things that happened. That's a great story. <laughs> I will never forget it, that's for sure. <laughs> um, there's a huge, huge interest in Viking drama. And and that's continuing. Why do you think that is? We have to get down to a deeper level here, more profound level. I think um, at this day and age... Oh, this is a big question. This is this could be a big question. I think this day and age, I think maybe a lot of us feel a bit detached. Yeah. From society because everything is going so fast. And I think social media, who was supposed to bring us closer together, has done quite the opposite. Yeah. So I think romanticizing a time where everyone were close if you were close you were really close there was a lot of honor there was a lot of loyalty and they look cool i mean yeah super cool i, I, I think yeah. there's i think there's a lot of answers to that one but i think that might be i think that might be um part of the truth I yeah think. That's such an interesting answer. I didn't know what you were going to say. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think that might be. I think that might be some of some of some one of the or a couple of the reasons why. And you know, there's also the whole thing about exploring and discovering new things. And maybe people, uh, myself included, feel that you know every. Every inch of this planet has been discovered by now. There's yeah. not a lot of new stuff. But then they didn't know anything from, you know, the county they were in or the country. And then they yeah. just got in a boat and sail across the sea. Come what may, you know, we're going that direction. And uh, yeah. I think stuff like that. I mean, the adventure of it. But I think, uh, yeah. I yeah. think uh, I read the other day they the, were the first Europeans to get to America. They yeah, found we, working. Yeah, we we like to think that. I mean, uh, Americans say that there was someone else, but we know we got there at least yeah. five hundred years before. So absolutely. Yeah, we went to Jerusalem. There's there's runes carved in in walls in Jerusalem. Um, from the 900s gosh i didn't know that in jerusalem as well gosh yeah, yeah. so Sigur, impressive sigur you shall fare was the guy was one of the guys who went to uh, to uh, jerusalem you shall fare means uh, the jerusalem traveler ah yeah right so we yeah. were all over the place Basically. Absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to ask you about the Norwegian film industry. What are the strengths of the Norwegian film industry? That's a different or a difficult question. <laughs> uh, I mean, Sorry. I think one thing might be how exotic it seems for a lot of people. I think the you know nature and and how we look maybe. Uh, but I think 
in terms of the film industry, I think, and the TV industry, I think, I've been thinking about this a little bit. I think it's because we don't follow the exact patterns. We kind of dare to go a, a bit off track. You know, we, we don't follow the, the formula for, for a film that a lot of films, maybe in Hollywood, for example, right. do. It might feel genuine, more genuine. I, I, I'm not sure. I, it's it's hard for me to to um, to pinpoint. the The community is is much smaller, so everyone that works in the business uh, on the crew side, at least, they work a lot. Right. So that they so they're really really good at what they do. I mean, I'm not take, trying to take anything away from any crew member in the world because I'm pretty sure they all are amazing I don't know I think you no I'm not sure no problem I've only got a few more questions for you what type of characters do you like to portray or would like to portray I love to portray uh, narcissistic murdering rapists (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I wonder who that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I just love to act. I can play whoever and enjoy it and find it enjoyable. Um, yeah. I've played, you know, doctors and Vikings and everything uh, almost i haven't played i have never played a policeman ah <laughs> i want to play a policeman and i've never done sci-fi and i really really want to do some sci-fi sometimes i'm a huge star wars nerd i was gonna say will you be in the next series i hope ashoka please and- <laughs> send it into the universe for me yes i will love you forever <laughs> star wars must be the the, the highlight of any actor's career, I can only imagine. Man, what I wouldn't do to just be <laughs> a stormtrooper number five in the back row from the left, it would be great. I would, I would just a uh, yeah, nerdgasm. Where, so, what do you have coming up for the the rest of the year? Actually, right now, I'm I'm. Uh, we just started uh, uh, shooting a TV show, a Norwegian TV show which we're shooting two seasons back to back. And it's a very, very good story. Um, And something I have never done before. So it's super enjoyable for me. I can't spoil. What can I say about it? What can I say? I can't say much and that that bugs me because I really want to tell you all, but it's going to be really good. It's very well written. Uh, It has, marvelous actors in it the director is also playing the lead so he and he's fantastic i'm i'm just so happy and so stoked about the whole thing so um that's good as you can see i kept my beard for it yeah and it's uh, contemporary it's not a, a period piece it has a couple of stories in there but for me it's a love story about two brothers Oh, interesting. When, yeah. When's it out? Is it next year? It will be out next year, I think, yeah. Right. Okay. So we're shooting now. We're in the third week. We just finished the third week of shooting, and we're shooting until mid-June. And then we have a long, wonderful summer vacation. And then we're starting shooting season two in uh, in uh, mid-August. Wonderful. Yeah. Wish you all the very best with everything for the rest of the year. And Thank all the so best much. to your all the best to your lovely dog as well. And continued oh, yeah. good here. health. <laughs> Wait a second. Is he here? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Bit shy. Oh no. Oh my god. That's there the he cutest. is. Oh. And you know, you remember me talking about Star Wars, right? Yeah. This uh, is Han Solo. <gasps> no, that's the dog's name. His name is Han Solo. He even has a passport with the name oh in it. Oh my God. So. 
<laughs> the crazy thing That's is, I, I have a cat called Luke Skywalker. <laughs> ah, it's amazing. They would be super friends. I mean, he's, his best friend is a cat. It's a Maine <laughs> Coon that lives in the next door. So they play together and the, the cat is bigger than him. So Oh, oh that's so they're cool. They're best friends. Oh, that's lovely. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on to the Mighty Dragon. All the best to you and um, hopefully see you back here sometime. Thank you so much for having me. It was Thank a you. pleasure. And uh... fantastic. See you soon. Bye. Yeah.